This OEM build was posted on Walmart of all places for just $207. And since there's no way that you can beat the price to performance of this build by building it yourself, naturally, I had to snatch this up. The components in here just didn't make sense for the price because it sounded too good to be true, but they're still gonna need a little bit of help if we wanna turn this into a very capable 1080p gaming PC. I put around $150 worth of upgrades into this, making it around a $350-ish dollar gaming PC build, and honestly, I'm so happy with how this turned out. What I'm also happy about is today's video sponsor. Real quickly, I just wanted to remind you guys that today's build was indeed activated with Windows like all my other PC builds and flips, and I personally use GVG Mall which is also the sponsor of today's video. To celebrate their mid-year promotion for 2022, they're actually bumping up our normal 18% off discount up to 25% off, and that gets Windows keys and everything else down to some really affordable prices. They also have other great products on other software like Office 2021, and even some game keys from platforms like Steam, Origin, and Uplay, and they even have console stuff too like PSN and Xbox prepaid cards as well. Activating that Windows 10 on your computer is super simple to do. The entire process of buying and adding activating takes like five minutes total. So make sure you click that first link down in the description and don't forget to use discount code ZTT18 for 25% off. All right, so starting with the CPU, this $207 gaming PC came included with the Intel i3-10100, and since this CPU still costs around 80-ish dollars, or about half the price of the build, here's where things just didn't make sense. At $207, we're still seeing OEMs with Intel 6th gen CPUs in there, so to get a 10th gen pretty capable i3 chip in here means we're off to a really great start. For RAM, there was only one stick of DDR4, it was 8 gigabytes clocked at 2667, but since there's two RAM slots on the motherboard, you know we had to upgrade that to at least 16 gigabytes. I found this eight gigabyte stick that was only clocked at 2133 megahertz, meaning we'll still have to drop to that speed for both sticks, but for 20 bucks, that's still a really solid upgrade and it's definitely worth boosting us up to 16 gigabytes. For storage, it actually didn't come with an SSD at all, just a one terabyte 7200 RPM HDD. But the cool thing is that this motherboard has an M.2 NVMe slot, meaning that we could throw any SSD that we wanted to in here. I had this extra Kim Tigo 512 gigabyte NVMe drive laying around that I paid $39 for for a few months ago, and with that, we'll now have much faster speeds than the spinning Rust drive, and we definitely reinstall Windows on here to make sure the entire system is much faster. Speaking of which, the original Windows 10 install did come with a solid amount of bloatware, as you would expect from HP. Things like Booking.com, ExpressVPN, McAfee, and some stupid games were pre-installed, but since most of my audience is smart enough to realize that you should reinstall Windows no matter what after a fresh build, this isn't really an issue. And I'm still gonna keep the one terabyte HDD in here, that's definitely not a waste. That way we can have a much bigger library for our games, or you can even store a ton of local media on here if you wanted to. And finally for the graphics, as you would expect, or should expect, this $207 Walmart OEM build did not come with the dedicated GPU, just the integrated Intel 630 graphics on the 10100, so obviously we had to do something about that. Since our power supply is just a measly 180 watt 80 plus gold unit, I definitely didn't want to push that too far, and since there's also no external 6 pin PSU cable, I just went with this GTX 1650 that gets all of its power straight from the PCIe slot on the motherboard. These 1650s are going for super low prices right now for around $120 to $150 used, and this is still a very capable 1080p graphics card, and it'll pair absolutely perfectly with our i3-10100. To total everything up, here's all the upgrades that we installed, and as you can see, this came out to $300. $186, and for a build that has a very decent 1080p dedicated GPU in there, this is going to be pretty tough to beat in terms of price to performance. Unfortunately, I didn't bother with upgrading the aesthetics at all for this build, which you guys know at this point I usually do. Check out some of my previous OEM builds where I cut glass side panels, spray painted the units all white, etc. But for this one, I did at least attempt to upgrade the cooling department. This HP desktop doesn't include any case fans other than the exhaust fan, meaning it's not actually blowing any fresh air into the build. So we did attempt to mount some fans on the side here, but it ended up just being a complete waste of time. We managed to squeeze in this 80 millimeter Arctic fan on the side panel, which I thought would at least give us some noticeable temperature drops. But after testing, we really didn't see any difference outside of a margin for air. But the good thing is that these temperatures are indeed perfectly fine, so there's no real worry of thermal throttling or overheating. The bad thing is that in order to come to that conclusion, we bought and tested... 
multiple versions of 60 millimeter and 80 millimeter fans. And now I don't know what to do with any of these. Comment down below if you have any suggestions on how to use these. It's also worth noting that if you did want to add some RGB bling to an OEM build like this, you certainly could get a SATA powered 60 or 80 millimeter fan that has some RGB action. And then you would at least have some cool lights illuminating from the side panel of the case if that's something you're into. But with that aside, we got to get into the more important stuff with a build like this, the price to performance, obviously. And once again, Sam's got us covered with a full 20 game benchmarking run. And I'm really happy with these results. Starting on an easy title with Valorant, we put the settings at 1080p and medium, and we had no problem getting high enough FPS numbers so you could properly utilize a higher refresh rate monitor. And real quickly, speaking of that, I do want to highlight that the original Walmart page that I purchased this build from did indeed have a monitor in the picture with this build. And if you scroll down a bit, it was actually supposed to come included with an HP V24i 23.8 inch 1080p monitor, but mine didn't come with it. If you click on the link in the description, you'll now see that this build is priced at $300 $67. So I'm assuming that the price I bought it at was indeed correct for the build without the monitor, but I'm not 100% sure what happened here. So be on the lookout for that if you're trying to copy this build. Back to the benchmarks though. Next up is Apex Legends. And here we couldn't get the FPS quite as high, but we still got a very impressive 89 FPS while using 1080p and medium settings. For a tough task, we fired up Elden Ring. Let me know down in the comment section if you want to see a different game added to the benchmarking run mix, by the way. But here we kept the settings at 1080p and low and got a bit under our target 60 FPS mark with 51. Following that was Grand Theft Auto 5 and with the settings at 1080p and normal aka medium we got 72 FPS. For another tough one to run we got Call of Duty Vanguard. Can't wait for Modern Warfare 2 to come out later this year by the way and in 1080p with low settings we got 76 FPS. Halo Infinite trailed after that and with the same settings of 1080p and low we got 52 FPS. Lost Ark was up next and in 1080p with high we got 101 and for Forza Horizon 5 in 1080p medium we got 71. And saving the best for last we have Fortnite and in 1080p with pro settings not performance mode mind you where we could have gotten even higher numbers, here we got 114 FPS. And for our per usual 3D Mark Times by run, this $384 build cranked out a score of 3,525, and that's a really good representation of a solid price performance gaming PC build. And just in case those weren't enough for you, here's 10 more games that Sam benchmarked, and the only one we couldn't keep at 1080p was Red Dead Redemption 2, but that still got a very nice FPS average of 69. You'll love to see it. Nice. What I think you'll also love to see is a comparison of another similarly priced build, but using only new components. Feel free to click the video that's on the screen now to check that out.